John, you and I started our conversations first. Um, could could I pick on you? Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> and tell me, you know, how long you've been at MCC, what you're studying, um, what has been, um, what's helped you succeed there, that kind of stuff. Oh, well, I um, actually this was this fall was my last semester at MCC, so I graduated with uh, I will be graduating with an associate's degree in human services. Congratulations! Um, thank you. Um, I am pursuing to be a grief counselor, so I need a master's degree in that, and I still have a long way to go. Um, having the support from my kids and my wife was a big, big plus. Um, when I talked to them about going back to school, I made it a family discussion, so it wasn't just my own decision, you know, because right. it's not really fair. Um, as I said earlier, I've got a 15-year-old and a 10-year-old, and they both really love spending time with me. You know, Dad, let's play some video games. Dad, let's go outside. Let's go do this. So it was really important to make sure that they were on the same page to know that I may not have a whole lot of time to have fun. I, you know, I'm, I work full-time. I'm a student full-time, so I got homework to worry about. You know, um, so that's been, that's been a little bit of a struggle, um, trying to manage homework, quality time with the kids, making sure I had time for the wife, you know, because you can't leave her out of it. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's, it's had its moments. My wife has definitely helped me out a couple of times with school in general. You know, when I'm feeling stressed out or overwhelmed, I can't handle it. I mean, 2020 threw everybody for a loop. That, <laughs> that was a rough year. Yeah. Uh, not with the kids being home on top of that and making sure they're on top of their studies. Um, but my wife was definitely very helpful with that. Um, 2016 was a uh, turning point for me. Um, my wife and I, we lost a son. So um, it's probably one of the reasons why I'm going for grief counseling is uh, after losing her son, there was a lot of support for the moms and a lot of support for the kids really not a whole lot for the dads you know um and that was kind of an eye-opener for me it was like I want to change that because even though men are supposed to be tough and you know can handle it all we still hurt oh, sure. you know we still have emotions so I want to change that I want to offer services for men in general that's okay to talk about your feelings. It's okay to cry. It's okay to say, I can't handle it right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, my kids also are really trying to push me for uh, helping kids. Uh, they think I'd be a great school counselor, but I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I have been thinking a lot about it. Um, and instead of just working with men and grief in general, I think I do want to also work with kids because I feel that if we can get the kids the proper tools now to handle life situations, um, coping mechanisms now, they'll be better off in the future. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. I am so very sorry for your loss. Oh, thank um, you. But what a way to channel your own grief into something um, productive and positive for for yourself your family and others um bravo john bravo thank you um when i look at my screen um carrie you're sitting over there i'm going to ask you um <laughs> um how long have you been studying at mcc what are you studying um what's helped you succeed there are just so many different answers to those questions. Um, <laughs> the last one in particular. Now, John, I have to say, you kind of stole my story a little bit because I'm sorry. No, it's funny because um, our paths are very similar. My year was 2019. I found myself very knee deep in an abusive relationship, mm -hmm. and I successfully got out of it. Uh, much like yourself, John, my audience is now 
um, peers. I am going to help victims of domestic violence through that with a uh, MSW in trauma counseling, trauma certification. So, um, so I think, you know, that's really funny. And, you know, the fact that you mentioned that you lost a child and that it opened up a whole new door for you to be able to help others. I mean, that's exactly where, that's exactly what happened. I am in complete shock and awe at how much the MCC community is supportive of student parents. It was an amazing surprise to discover that there was an entire network of people that understand what I'm going through. Um, you know, and, and not only am I a parent, but I'm a, uh, an exclusively single parent. He does not see his father. His father has no interest in him. So that is, that is like time limiting in to a degree that I had no idea would be coming up. So I am, I'm, a, I'm at, you know, I'll be honest. I'm a little sad I'm graduating. There's, there's a whole network of people that are just incredibly just holding me up and telling me that everything is going the way it's planned. Don't worry about it. The financial support that I've gotten from the school is absolutely amazing. They recognize my situation. I had no idea there was such a gem in the community. I just, it, I'm so, did I answer any of your questions? I, I don't care. I love, I love what you have to say. <laughs> Just, um, no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised that I was selected to, um, to talk on this call with you, and I'm honored to meet you, by the way, oh. um, because of this incredible support system. Like, you will, you will hold me accountable for anything that I do, and you will say, no, that is not how parents are on campus. We're going to fix this, and we're going to make it better. I just, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. This should not amaze you that you were invited to this. Carrie's, Carrie attended our student parent meetings and her story and her honesty and her contributions were so incredible that as a, as a group, the people who led those meetings invited her to be part of the college-wide resource committee. Tell me about your son. How old is he? Um, he just turned nine in December, right after Christmas. Um, he is, I don't know, I have no words. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure where I would be without him. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like who's rescuing who here, you know, like, um, it is, it's, it's a blessing. My hunch is he feels the same about you. All right. Well, wow. <laughs> I appreciate being sad about leaving MCC. Um, cause I too am on the cusp of my time at MCC. Um, and it is a great place, but if there's anything that I've learned, it's that once a member of the MCC family, you are always a member of the MCC family. Your faculty, your staff that you've worked with the support will love to see you again and will love to hear what's going on. As you said, as life continues to happen, they love that. So know that you may go on um, to one or two other institutions and one or two other degrees, but you are always part of the MCC family and we count on you coming back. But Emily, we're gonna ask you to unmute and share a little bit about you know, when you, how long you've been at MCC, what you're studying, where you're thinking of going. Um, tell us about your child or children. Uh, so I have two daughters, Riley is 11 and Lyndon is just turned nine. Um, I actually graduated from MCC uh, December of 2018, so I walked across the stage in 2019, and I was contacted by Marianne um, as one of the people that had identified as, as being a single parent. I actually started coming to MCC in 2012, so it took me six years to chip away at that associate's degree, taking a semester here and a semester there and a couple of classes here and, um, you know, being also a single, exclusively single parent of those kids and working full time also. Um, but when I was contacted by Marianne, I 
was like, I just started working at MCC like a month ago. And she's like, no way. And I'm like, yeah, just like all, everything came full circle. And um, I ended up taking my civil service test and I got, I was contacted by MCC for an open position as a secretary. It just, it lined up so perfectly. And I ended up like the faculty that I had for my world language and the cultures department were some of my professors and some of my faculty in the psychology department were some of my psychology professors. So, um, it just, it, it, totally it, it all came together. It did. Unfortunately, I was bumped in oh. the process, but, uh, in a couple months ago, but still like, it's still, I'm still glad to be at MCC. Now I'm in dual enrollment. So that's, just a whole different end of the spectrum. Now I'm working with more with high schools and students. I started coming to MCC. My, it was the same year that my youngest was born. So they were pretty little, um, you know, only like one and three when I started coming to MCC. Um, and it was a nightmare trying to raise babies and work and go to school. And I struggled with a lot of guilt. Like I felt like I was missing their childhood a little bit, trying to do it all. But, and back then MCC didn't have the support that it has now like that. I'm so glad that this program has come and like, I've gotten to see it change from how it was, you know, when I started here in 2012 and there wasn't really support back then to now there's just this huge plethora of support everywhere you look and so many resources and it's so good to see because definitely some of my biggest struggles were finding childcare because a lot of parents that are student parents were taking classes on the weekends we're taking classes at night so even if we have you know daycare we often don't have daycare during the hours that we need it to take those night or weekend classes just That's a, a New problem York State policy problem. Yeah. Marianne, is there any update on that since Emily's challenges? No, um, yeah, so I, I administered a survey in summer 2019 to all of our student parents. And the number one thing that they said that they needed to succeed in school was childcare. And, and typically we think of childcare as like for kids zero to five. But really, it's like it's the gamut. It's like zero to eighteen. You know, it's not just daycare. It's after school care and summer camps and before school care. And that's something that NCC is really working on cementing now. There's an agency in Rochester called the Child Care Council that works with parents, regardless of whether they're college students or not, to find like this large, you know, blanket type of child care for them whether it's near their home, their work or their school, whether it's before school care, after school care, daycare, and helps them fill out forms to get subsidies for childcare, helps them figure out like, do you want care in someone's home versus in a versus center-based care? And so that's something that really kind of bubbled to the top of what our student parents said they needed was this childcare. And it's for the exact same reasons that you articulated, Emily. So that's something that we're really working hard on. And I feel like, I mean, if I could ask a question. So when I ran that survey in summer 2019, all of these issues kind of came to the top. Childcare was number one. Number two was access to emergency funding, like you know, to because you might be short on your rent one month, or you know, you might need car repair. Car repairs. There were issues about you know not having access to food. I think um, with me it was that when he was in school at the beginning of spring, he was in school for plenty of time, um, and then it just it just got cut like way in half. I mean, now he's only in school for four days a week and the time is less. And it's like, when am I supposed to do this without childcare? So yeah. it's just, uh, yeah, the coverage, the support. I mean, but it's like, sometimes it's just having fun with someone that you need. Yes. 
you know, and then you can connect with other parents and that alleviates some of the stress. And then you are okay with doing another homework assignment, you know, and it's like, even though you are extremely tired, you suddenly have the energy to do that again. And uh, maybe the only thing that I might suggest is um, some sort of flexibility around um, alternate times for classes something with that there was one class that I was invited it was an honors class I was invited to take and I asked around a bunch of professors and a bunch of people I asked my family like is an honors class that big of a deal or um, should I rearrange my entire life just to take this class because it was in the Brighton campus at a time when my son was home from school. Mm-hmm. I wanted to take the honors class so badly that I, I emailed the professor. I said, is there any possibility that I can do this online exclusively? Can we meet at a separate time? Like I'll pay more tuition if you can have like one-on-one Zoom calls or whatever. I'll, I'll do whatever I want to take your class. And I got lucky because everything, um, everything got remote, the whole, the hybrid with the Zoom. And so I could Zoom any time I wanted. And that was just, that was serendipitous. I think that the pandemic will leave so many things changed. I mean, I, I think we're kidding ourselves to think that the vaccine is a ticket back to 2019, cause it's not. Um, because we've lived through remote everything, <laughs> there are elements that will stay, you yeah. know, the convenience of Zoom. Um, so for example, one of the things that we're trying here at MCC this spring, Carrie, um, some faculty have volunteered, they've stepped up to do what we're calling high flex courses. And those courses will be delivered in three modes. So there'll be a small group that the faculty is meeting with face-to-face, you know, socially distanced, safe, whether it's the classroom or the lab. Um, And that will simultaneously or synchronously, that will be on Zoom. So a person who is available at that time, but couldn't get to that space um, could watch it on Zoom. And just as this Zoom call is being recorded, that Zoom lecture or Zoom class is gonna be uh, recorded. So there, three ways that a student could actively participate in the class. Um, and what we're trying, because this, I, I think flexibility is gonna be extremely important for students studying in the future, um, particularly for student parents, <laughs> uh, but for all students, because they've gotten a taste of some of the flexibility of Zoom. Um, and there are pieces of that that can work really well. So we have a, a, a group of faculty that are piloting that this spring. Um, They will work with our virtual campus and our technology folks to help us build the infrastructure uh, so that we can expand the number of sections each year, each semester that faculty can offer um, high flex. First of all, it's never too late to start. didn't think I was ever going to go to college. I dropped out of high school and got my GED at 17 and then I was pregnant at 19. So I didn't think I was going to go to college. Um, So it's never too late to start. And also it's never too late to finish. You know, I didn't think I was, you know, I got so far, but I didn't think I was actually going to get a degree. And really I only needed one more semester to actually close out that degree. Um, And I don't know if I'm really supposed to say this, but if you're a single parent and you're struggling, a lot of times they'll pay you to go to school. Like the financial aid and stuff that you get, you know, it, when I was going to school, it covered all my books, all my tuition. Plus there was some that I got refunded back just to use for daycare or, you know, for whatever I needed. Um, And that was a huge help to me. And it motivated me to stay at school and and Carrie, I was one of those students on financial aid. So you might as well save yourself some money and go to a community college and get those same credits for less money. And you have an amazing support system as as a parent. And you're not going to get that anywhere else. I would tell them to go for it. 
Um, I didn't think in a million years that I'd be going to college, going for a completely different degree. You know, I'm a construction worker. I had never thought I'd be wanting to go be in, in an office and talk to people. Um, I would say the biggest thing would be find out where your support system is at home. You know, whether it's, you know, if, if you don't have a significant other, you know, see about your parents. Maybe they can help you out with that. If you have any close family members that can lend you support with your kids. Um, financial aid. Even though I'm married and I have two kids, I still was able to get financial aid. And that was a big help right there because I financially can't afford not even the books, you know, if I didn't have that. Um, so that is a big help. And there is a lot of financial assistance out there for parents who are looking to go back to college. I would say just go for it. Take the chance. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You know, it's never you're never too old. I mean, it was amazing to be able to show my kids that, yeah, I'm 35 years old. and I'm a college student. Like, <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Like, if you really want to go for it. Um, and I'm even talking, maybe going for another degree in American Sign Language because I just took the intro this semester and I love the class. I loved it. Oh, I'm thrilled to hear that. I'm thrilled to hear that. And John, what great advice. Go for it. <laughs> go for it. Absolutely. All right. And Carrie. What are your thoughts? Yes, go for it. It's gonna suck at times, just saying it like it is. <laughs> the thing that has come up for me is my son is watching me. He's, you know, always watching, always listening. Mommy's back in college. She's happy. She's doing well. She's on the honor society. I think he's starting to understand the quality of life aspect of going back to school. I was not happy where I was. Do something about it. These are really, really good life lessons for him. So I think that when he sees me enjoying my classes and I get confirmation from my professors and, you know, I'm... I'm in my mid forties now. So I think it's like, you know, when I make a decision, it's, it's what I want. You're spread very thin. And that is just a general understanding. And everyone knows that the rumors are true. You know, it's very difficult to be a parent student, um, but it is worth it. You are all of you and inc incredible role models for your children. Um, and I, I love, I love the piece. Um, that you added, Carrie, that you're also happy, that you can be stretched thin, you can be working hard, um, but you're happy. After 22 straight years of education full-time, the one takeaway, the one thing I remember most from grad school was that the research shows that the biggest predictor of kids' happiness is their mom's happiness. And seriously, so, so when the mom is happy, the kids are happy. And what you Carrie, what you said is just, just, just confirms that. And Emily, in your early part of this conversation, you talked about some feelings of guilt. You can let those go, right? The research says you can let those go because if what you're doing is making you happy, your kids are happy. And that would be my advice is to give yourself some slack and don't let yourself feel guilty. I felt guilty, but it wasn't justified. I was making a better life for my kids. Don't let yourself feel that way. Your kids are going to be fine if they have to watch Netflix for a little bit so you can study. Like, just give yourself some slack. <laughs> Thank you so very much for sharing your time. More importantly, your stories. Um, as I said, um, I, I am humbled to hear what student parents do in order to succeed and all of you are doing that. Um, so thank you for choosing MCC. Thank you for your time today. Um, Marianne, any thought you wanna have in closing? I'll just echo what President Douglas said. Thank you so much for your time and your stories and your, your commitment.